Trebonianus Gallus becomes emperor with Odysseus' death because he is the man on the scene of the army, and Hostilian, although he is Caesar, isn't. And also he's quite young, so he's not really a power in himself. Um, mm. And there's two traditions. So Gallus comes to Rome, and he, unlike many other emperors, he doesn't kill Hostilian, at least at first, and uh, actually incorporates him into his family, which does make a lot of sense because Hostilian is the last member of, of the Decian dynasty, so he is the link to the previous regime. It makes a lot of sense for Gallus to try and keep him alive. And, sure. And also Gallus was, I wouldn't say a friend of Decius, but closely associated with Decius. So it, it does make a lot more sense for Gallus to keep Hostilian alive rather than bump him off. But there is a tradition yes. that he did, which I think there is not much sense to. Far more plausible excuses put forward in that Hostilian died of the plague, presumably the Cyprian plague, which is something Gallus is known to have dealt with. I think it's Aurelius Victor that, yes, Aurelius Victor that mentions Gallus had to actually start burying people because of the deaths from the Cyprian plague which had erupted at this time. And so Hostilian, I think, is a victim of the plague rather than some palace conspiracy. Yeah, I think Hostilian, in terms of ranking, I think he's unrankable because... <laughs> There's no reign to talk about, really. Just yeah. But <laughs> it appears more common often in the sources, I think, is the plague version in way. So I think it also has that on its side. Because I suppose it's a natural suspicion to have that he might have decided, well, Hostilian might be a threat in the future. And But I think, as you say, he's sort of his link to the past. Yeah. And to legitimacy. Also, you know, he could have eventually adopted him. There's ways in which he could have linked himself into the preceding dynasty in more secure ways that we also see with, um, you know, the Theodosians and Valentinians linking marriage. themselves to the Constantinians. It's yeah. Marriage adoption. Well, there's lots of ways he could have placated Hostilian after he grew up, because he was still a young teenager. So. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's probably, un yeah, I, I suspect it's probably unfair and makes less sense to see it as Gallus is doing. Yeah, I think un ultimately Hostilian, like Claudius Gothicus much later, was a victim of epidemic, probably. Also to yeah. remember, a lot of the sources don't like Gallus. Uh, yes. Remembered as being supine in the administration of the Empire, which yes. is not exactly the most glowing report. Yeah. And there's also a suspicion. There's also a suspicion that I don't take seriously, but it is probably plays into this, which is that he was viewed as that he helped that he betrayed Decius during the Gothic War, yeah. which I don't think makes sense because it's not clear why the Roman army, why the De why Decius's army would therefore support him, if this was a particularly apparent fact. But, and I also think the Roman sources have a tendency perhaps a bit like the Philip Gordian issue, and a bit also later with Valerian and Sharpur, there's some sources use treachery to explain their defeats. And I think they use it as a bit of a get out of jail free card when they've been genuinely outplayed on the battlefield. So yeah, I think that might be a part of it too, that because there's this later idea in the later sources that Trebonianus Gallus betrayed Decius on the battlefield, then it makes sense for him to have killed Hostilian as well. So he'd be a traitor and a murderer. Yes. And, so and I think. Administration. Yeah, and I think yeah, Treponius Gallus, I'm not sure how to. I find him genuinely difficult to sort of assess because we don't have a lot of info, really. He had to deal with. There's a lot that was outside of his control. He had to deal with this, as you say, the Cyprian Plague. And we know that there was defeats in the East because at this point in time, or well, by 253, the last year of his reign, I mean, we know only thanks to Sharpur, but we know that he pressed into Syria and defeated a large, the, the Roman provincial army at Barbalissus and killed, you know, defeated tens of thousands of Romans. Uh, we know from Roman sources, he sacked Antioch itself, the most important city in Syria, 
he raided as far as Cappadocia and Calicia. He then started focusing on fortresses in Upper Mesopotamia. So things are going badly in the East, but Gallus isn't there. And I guess that's a problem that he isn't there to deal with this issue, but perhaps he didn't have much time to, because if this invasion happened... Yeah, he doesn't have... He hasn't been emperor for very long, and if... Shah, I guess Shapur needed time to actually conquer Armenia. So generally, the fall of Antioch is dated to 253, and it was a surprise march on the city. It wasn't a long siege. And so it seems like this all started happening in the last months of Gallus's reign, and so we can't really blame him for not being there. Maybe he... My take on yep. Gallus is he comes across... I mean, we have to take the biases the sources to one side, I think, but he comes across as a capable emperor, but completely hamstrung by the situation he was in. Yeah, the front mm. were collapsing, the well, he's eventually destroyed by Emelian, because when he rebels, his uh, Gallus's troops murder him. He's clearly able to inspire some loyalty, though, because Valerian rebels against Emelian's rebellion. Yes, Valerian was off collecting troops for Gallus at the time, yeah. He, Gallus is responsible for dealing with the Cyprian plague, uh, so starting to bury the dead, these kinds of things, which he's trying to establish as a dynasty, he's incorporating Decius as one. I think it, it's a case of he was really in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I think it's because of all of these failures around him that a lot of the later dislike of him comes from. Why are the front is crumbling? Clearly because Gallus couldn't even spell his name properly, uh, let alone run the Empire properly. And then why was he eventually killed? Well, because he was rubbish emperor, you know, traitor, murderer, these sorts of things. Exactly. Uh, I think he's getting the same treatment that uh, Gallienus. I mean, we'll get to Gallienus, but he, I think it's the same treatment. It's 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 considered a pers a problem of the personality of the emperor yeah. that the empire is having problems. When in Gallus's case, he didn't even have time to really do anything. I mean, Zosimus calls him negligent and lazy, but I think that seems like th that's the same that's the same kind of accusation that is levied against Gallienus. When we know that Gallienus was actually very militarily active. There's oh, yeah. plenty of campaigns. And so I think it's just, it becomes a sort of an easy explanation for these authors, these ancient authors, to conclude, well, Gallus was just lazy. Yeah, so but I'm genuinely not sure how I'd rank him then, because I, <laughs> it just, I, I guess like I would I'm, mediocre, but that's just the default, I guess. I think it's the, the odd one of, I'm going to put him in incompetent, but I don't think he was incompetent. I think it's just the situation he was in was almost untenable. That's fair. Um, I think it's also telling about the state of the frontiers at this point in that Emelian is proclaimed emperor because of this big victory he has. I think it's over the Goths. Was it the Goths yeah. or Germans? Um, it, it was the Goths, yeah. Uh, and he's proclaimed emperor because of that. The frontiers are crumbling and as soon as a half-decent solution comes along, his reign comes to end very quickly. Because he, I think he it, marches I, out to meet him, and then his troops just murder him instead. Yes. And uh, yeah. his son, Belusian. Yeah, which I guess is a point in his favour that he'd set up a successor for himself, even if the successor was killed along with him. Mm. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, and I, I think he also gets a bit of hate in the sources because he allowed the Goths... He basically declared he made peace with the Goths yeah. after that defeat. But it sounds like, you know, while there was enough of an army to proclaim him emperor, it sounds like after those two defeats, they weren't in a position to be stopping the Goths from returning to their homeland. Yeah. Yeah, I guess incompetent. Yeah, poor makes sense. But it's, yeah, I guess it's not clear how much it's really his fault.